Hello, and welcome back to another TCAN video. I can't believe it. We actually hit 3,000 subscribers, which I really never thought this channel would do because I really just started it for friends. But a big thanks to all you guys for making that happen. And I know if my budget content won't get you to subscribe, then a cute picture of my puppy will. Now, I was hoping to get this video out sooner, but I was really struggling to pick up gear to make this specific video happen. Between nothing ever dropping for me in any of the heroics I ran, to just flat out getting flamed by sweaty groups to the last boss, even though he hadn't had a single death, and just killed the hardest boss in the instance. But that's enough about me crying about loot. Today's video is going to be an introduction to Death Knight soloing, and who better to practice on than Doomwalker himself. Now, if you feel like you got clickbaited, you may still want to stick around, because even though you can't solo the world boss, you can still do it with your friends, and there's more than meets the eye here. As always, talents and glyphs will be in the description down below, and if you have any questions on them, feel free to ask in the comments section. I will also say that I got this idea from an old YouTuber who doesn't make content anymore named Ragwin Soloing, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check him out. What makes this farm so lucrative is Doomwalker only takes about 20 minutes to kill, and he drops 500 gold and 2 BOE epics. And to put the icing on the cake, Doomwalker is on all layers, so on my server there's 9 Doomwalkers available, which I can tell you nobody is farming because I've killed him about 5 times now. And as you can see, even if you're not a death knight, this farm is still pretty profitable with a couple of friends. Getting into the poll here, let's talk about rotation. To open, we're going to start by using Icy Touch, then Plague Strike, then Death Strike, then Blood Strike, and finally our Horn of Winter. And then to keep the diseases rolling on the target since we don't want them to fall off and we have Glyph of Disease, we're going to use Pestilence to refresh them since it only uses one Blood Ruin instead of an Unholy or Frost Ruin. After that, we're going to Death Strike Spam, use Rune Strike when it's available, and you get that after a Parry or a Dodge, and then we're going to only Blood Strike when we have the extra Blood Ruin available. Keep in mind, Pestilence is going to take one Blood Ruin, so we're going to want to always save one for that. I personally think the hardest part about playing a solo blood DK is managing your blood ruins because all your defensives are based on blood ruins, but you also want to keep them on cooldown because from our talent tree, we get 5% damage reduction for 10 seconds when they're on cooldown. Now that you understand how easy the rotation is, I wanted to spend some time to discuss blood death knight defensives because this is really what makes all of this possible. The first ability is Icebound Fortitude, which is a 2 minute cooldown that reduces damage taken by about 40% for 12 seconds. This comes in handy when you need damage mitigation and don't have any heals available or during a boss enrage. The second ability is Rune Tap. This is a 30 second cooldown and instantly heals you for 20% of your overall health for only one Blood Ruin. This ability really comes in clutch when you're waiting for runes to come up for your Death Strike spam. Next we have Vampiric Blood, which increases your overall health by 15% and increases the healing received by an additional 35%. This ability pairs really nice with Blood Tap when you need a massive heal. Death Pact is another ability that heals for 40% of our overall health and is used usually during an emergency situation. We can do this by summoning our ghoul and then immediately sacking him for a really quick heal. Mark of Blood is a debuff that you put on the enemy and each time that enemy hits you, you get 4% of your overall health back. This is great for using when you need damage mitigation or doing packs and dungeons. Lastly, we have Lichborn, which I'm not really the biggest fan of this ability, but it does allow you to heal yourself with your Death Quail and makes you immune to fears, charms, and sleeps, so it does have its uses. You can also make a macro to target yourself and heal instead of just clicking off while you're doing the boss fight. So now that we talked about defensives, let's quickly talk about gear and then talk about the boss abilities. For our gear, we're really looking for tanking pieces, and not just any tanking pieces. We want high stam and then avoidance stats like dodge and parry. With the specific gear that I have on right now, I've got about a 21% chance to dodge and a 19% chance to parry. And this will really come in handy when we talk about the boss abilities. The first boss ability is Sunder Armor, and what this does is it puts a debuff on you for 30 seconds and it stacks up to 10 times, and each time he puts a stack on you, it reduces your overall armor by 10%. So if you have 10 stacks on you, that means you basically have no armor. 
This is the main reason why we want high avoidance is because he does this ability about every 15 to 20 seconds and the idea is to dodge it so it doesn't stack up to 10 times and it'll eventually fall off. Now if you haven't already noticed I am in blood presence to do more damage to the boss and if the Sunder armor does stack past 5 I would actually strongly encourage you to switch over into frost presence so you can start mitigating some of that extra damage you're going to be receiving. The second ability that the boss does is called Overrun, and what this does is it tosses the tank around and it actually wipes all threat. So if you're doing this with a group of people, the boss will automatically run to one of the DPS so the tank will need to taunt it to pick it back up. Now if you're soloing the boss, you don't have to worry about losing threat, but what you should be concerned about is ledges because there's been many of times where the boss tosses me up in the air. I land on a ledge and then the boss resets back to 100% and there's nothing more discouraging than having the boss at about 40% and then all of a sudden he jumps back up to 100. The third ability that Doomwalker does is an earthquake and what this does is it occasionally knocks you on the ground but it's really not that threatening because it doesn't do much damage and it's actually very helpful when you have high sunder armors what you can do is you can use that as an opportunity to run away to see if your stacks can fall off. The fourth ability is a lightning shock that really doesn't do much damage and a lot of the times it'll actually be targeted on one of your blood worms so you don't really need to worry about this one too much. Lastly and probably the most important ability is at 20% the boss enrages and he does 100% more damage. This is where we're going to want to make sure we're in frost presence to do as much damage mitigation as possible and we're going to want to save all of our cooldowns because as you'll watch through this clip I will get very close to dying a couple of times.
that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. And if you found this guide helpful, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.